And lastly, but definitely not least, we're very excited to have uh, Coach uh, Victor LaPena here with us from the Canadian Senior Women's National Team program. Um, he's going to be uh, going into uh, probably, a, uh, and at the end, probably questions open up to a wide range of topics, but uh, specifically rebounding and defensive transition for all levels of basketball. Uh, this is the first time we've had Coach uh, Victor here with us virtually. We, of course, would love to see him in person. Uh, Victor, for your information, we do this clinic every fall, and this is our 14th year. Uh, we would love to have you in person here in a, in a, in a, in a, at a future one that we would uh, go back in, in real person. Um, but we'd love to have you uh, here with us this afternoon. Um, the team itself that he's uh, leading uh, just finished a, a successful summer by uh, bringing home a bronze medal uh, from the America Cup this last, uh, this last summer uh, from so in South America. Uh, that keep, keeps their uh, Olympic uh, hopes alive. They've got uh, over the next month and into February – uh, some big competitions that are uh, going to set the tone for uh, uh, we all know a successful summer back in Paris as the team deserves to be at the uh, world stage level. And uh, we're very lucky as a country to have coach Victor involved uh, with the uh, guiding the, the, the direction of the national women's team program. Uh, Winnipeg's Emily Potter is in the mix of this team and was a, a part of the squad this last summer. And uh, she's just reaching her peak. She's playing pro right now in Australia. But, uh, Victor, that's our connection to your team as Emily. And um, uh, we're very excited to have you part of us here this afternoon. No, so, the topic uh, we have today is um, offensive rebound and transition defense. So why I like to talk about it is because I think in any in any uh, age you can uh, transmit to the players how important it is to, to, to have some good rules in... Uh, in, in the offensive rebound and transition defense. And it's because if you uh, score, usually you don't have a lot of problems to stop the ball, to get a good defense, to set a good defense and good transition. But if you don't score or after turnover, or a lot of times you are thinking about, about it and you say, hey, why after basket we stop? uh the ball or but after turnover or after if we don't score we res we give easy points to the rival and then i just years ago i reflect about it and i was analyzing uh some statistical details and i was analyzing almost in women basketball okay in the in the highest level uh, almost eight or nine thousand uh, shots from different uh, different spots, from corner, from wing, on from the top in lineups, etc. And I realized that the, the ball sometimes is by percentage. Is, if you don't score, the ball is in a, is by percentage in different. Uh, uh, spots in the in the in the in the, in the court, so uh, I start to think about. Come on, Victor, reflect about to create your own rules, rules that I'm sure that a lot of uh, coaches uh, have in their team. But just I just is what I want to transmit to you: how we uh, try to go to the offense rebound and to stop the ball, to 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 set the, our transition defense. Um, Etc. Um, the role number one is don't rest, no, stay active and stay focused. Uh, this role is something is okay, but everybody wants that, you know, everybody wants to 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 be active and to right. stay focused etc. in the practice. How many times you are uh, you are working on half court with your playbook or that's in any situation, and you whistle, boom, whistle, and stop the practice. And maybe it's after shot or after a score, but you don't keep working in the next action, the next play. No, uh, then during the practice you are missing, you are losing a lot of opportunities to work on the next play, and maybe just is three, four seconds to say, okay, let's wait what happened. After the sad, you know, if we get the rebound to keep working or kick out, uh, etc., or uh, inbound to try to stop the ball or whatever. 
happen after this situation. And at the end of the year, if you count all the, those moments that you don't, you stop the practice, you will realize that it's a lot of time that you didn't work on your offensive rebound and transition defense, even, even the older pass, eh? et cetera, et cetera. So this is why the rule number one is don't rest. Keep working always. Doesn't matter if you score. Doesn't matter if you don't score. Uh, doesn't matter if it's after turnover or in any situation. Even I, uh, when I talk with my players, if the referee whistle is still working, keep working. You know, because you never know if maybe the whistle from, comes from the stands or, or whatever. You know, it's, especially in the in the when you're with kids, it happens a lot of times. So my first uh, advice, or so just it's not advice, it's just hey, try to don't stop the practice always in that moment. Uh, encourage your team to keep working and to stay active. Uh, primary uh, outcomes, protect a rim, no easy points. Uh, this is obvious, no? Don't give easy points to the rival uh, because if you force your rival to play always in hard court and to don't give them easy points in transition situations, uh, maybe they are not able to score 60 points or 55 points. So then you can manage and you can have the control of the team. Uh, pressure defensive glass, keep our balance and spacing in any moment. Um, what I have to say is when I uh, work uh, on this with uh, my players, I'm all the time talking with them. This is part of our offense and part of our defense. Let's say we have to be ready for any situation. If we play well and we are looking for a logical shot, almost everyone knows the responsibilities. But if uh, we uh, are not playing well, if we are taking uh, unlogical decisions or taking unlogical shots, or after turnover, the team is not totally ready to stop the ball and to avoid easy points. Um, I work on this a lot of times after turnover, you know, or I like to create uh, drills with uh, a logical set, let's say, contest is that, or maybe a situation when you are making the layup and then you don't score and you fall down. And the the response of your teammates always is after it happens. You know, so it's very, very important to react when the situation is happening. And we have to 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 work with our players to help them to to read and react these situations too. Uh, so the rule number two uh, for is uh, for forwards, pressure, offensive blast, for sure, it's anticipate the shot. What it means? It means like when the, your, the guard is going to take the shot or, or to catch the ball, if you know uh, perfectly your teammate, you will know that, let's say, example, Kianus, I'm uh, Kale Alexander, and I see that the ball is going to Kianurs and Kianurs is, is in, a, in an open side. So I know that almost 100% Kianurs will take the side. So I can anticipate the side to be in a better position in offensive rebound than even the my own defender. Uh, don't worsen for the rebound. Work on angles to improve position. What is work on angles to improve position? Is if you uh, check the kids, especially um, in senior level too, eh? but especially kids, uh, when they are working offensive rebound and the defender is boxing out, they don't try to go in a diagonal way. Always is like a, a stride. And sometimes I talk with them, why are you going for this way? There is not a space. Your defender is in front of you. You cannot go through here. Please try to go in diagonal way, and then you will have more options to take the rebound. This is very, very important. And everything that we are doing with that is with drills. We improve with drills. Two on two, one on one, three on three, uh, three on zero, four on zero, five on up, 
whatever. You can to create your own uh, pathway, no? In this way, your own, uh, your own um, process. You create your own rules. And this is my rules. I'm just trying to share with you what is my, my rules and how we are uh, doing every day this rule. And we work on this every day, every day. Okay, it's main part of our team uh, during the practice. Uh, and the players know that we have to be the best team in the world doing that. To have second options, to have uh, the habit to stop the rival in transition, often especially. Here you have a couple of two or three situations that you will see now. Look, stop. When, so it's not, I have to stop. When Kayla fit Aliyah Edwards, Kayla knows 100% that, that Aliyah is going to take the side. So look, Kayla Alexander from the free throw. You know, not in this direction. She was in diagonal, she, can, she ran, and then she get the spot to get the rebound and, okay, to score. And the rest of the player, you check them, they are not doing perfect, but they are working, okay, to be ready to stop the ball. Second option, uh, uh, Naira Phil is shooting from the wind, so check the two post players, Leticia Mihaier and Kela Alexander are in the, close to the, the the black and and Letiz is on the pain. Look, boom! They are all the time working to get second options, but usually is in this situation even was in my opinion too late because Naira Fields is a very good shooter and everybody know that Naira is going to take it. But in my opinion, even too late. But anyway, they keep working and they have the option to have second chance. And then keep working. I don't know what is going on now, but sure, we have second opportunity to score. Look, shooting, and Kay Alexander wow. is getting. Sometimes we get the rebound, and sometimes we don't get the rebound. Okay, but at least everybody stay active and is ready to stop the ball. And if we get the rebound, perfect, we'll kick ahead or like now, no forward, forward, but always. If you check about if you check the rest of the players, almost everybody is doing is doing something to stop the ball and to be ready. Uh, this is the um, the three rules I want to to share with you. This is the three main rules: offensive rebound, transition, different rules. The rule three is when we are shooting from corner. When we shoot from corner. Rule is two players get to rebound, three players build our defensive balance. Uh, I have to say that sometimes when you have uh, in your team a very, very good rebounder, like we have now Cassandra Prosser, who is 18 years old, but is one of the best offensive rebounder in the world in, in her age. Sometimes we accept that Okay, let's figure out how to stop the ball and to, uh, how to set the transition defense. But I always ask, ask her, don't renounce to go to offensive ball. We will fix it, but don't renounce, especially to go to the free throw line. Okay? But our main rule is shot from corner, forwards always go to offensive rebound if they're in the right position, and... Uh, the rest of the players uh, go back. Sometimes even when we have our forward uh, on the top, even it's just one uh, the other forward, and let's see, maybe the, the win is in, in, in from weak side, comes to the free throw to stop the ball. You have here some clips. I hope all of them are very clear uh, sometimes it's not easy. Yeah, it's looking good on our side. It's clear, right? Thank you. Look, shooting from almost corner, no, but all of them are working in offensive rebound. Especially, you check the, the guards; they are ready 
even sometimes almost half court. And this is the scenario, I tell you, you know, Bridget is good offensive rebounder too, and he start to go back. Just see, take the free throw line, and he's working to stop the ball. You 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 know when I told you that a lot of times after the, the, the rebound is coming close to the free throw. So we have we are we have a rule to uh, stop uh, the free throw. Um, I want to just make a break. I know, guys, that uh, I'm the last one today. Okay. Uh, I, I, I know you had a long day by Zoom, learning and sharing basketball. So I will, I will try to be, uh, to, yeah, just to, to, to speak short, uh, to have short to speak, uh, speech and, and to try to reduce my time. Okay. To have time to, to, to keep working with questions or if you don't have questions, okay, we'll be done. So, you know, the, because Bridget come to here, Bridget match the ball, stop the ball. It was not very intense, but at least we were we were in a very good position to stop the transition offense. This is very clear situation. Corner. So now, look, Naira, number 21, and Kia, their job is to spring back. Okay, with Naira sometimes, or maybe because she's tired, or maybe she, because she forgets uh, the rule, it's not easy for her. But if you look Kia, Kia is the best behavior, you know? Forwards goes to the French rebound, and Kia go back, and they are ready. If we don't score, they are ready. Everybody is ready to stop the ball. Mm -hmm. Okay, it was fall, but this is very clear too. Then Kia. Kia is intuitive. I told you here and say, Kia, be careful, especially uh, in layups and our shot from corner, but please go back. Try, but go back. So and she is very 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 responsible, no, with her with her rules. So now we score, but everybody was in a great position, you know. And this is habit, the habit to keep working all the time. For sure, we have uh, sometimes special rules uh, according with the scouting. If uh, the scouting is, uh, if we are playing against Japan. The team is very good in, in transition, in fast break situations. Um, we have a special rules now that we adjust uh, according with the rival's level. But, uh, and try now to explain you just our main rules. It's like a, a, when, when we use uh, always, when sometimes when I talk with the coaches now about defense, hey coach, what is your favorite uh, style? Or way to defense pick and roll, or way to defense off all the screens. Uh, I say always, uh, if my main defense stop the rival, I don't do nothing special. When I cannot stop the rival with my main defense, then I have to create a new situations or to use up different uh, options to defense the situations. So here is the same. If with our main rules in transition offense and offensive rebound, we stop the rival. We don't do nothing special. If we are playing against teams like Japan, uh, that we have to match them in three as soon as we can, we have maybe different rules, but maybe just in what position or with the, this player. So rule four is uh, penetration. Okay, in penetration, it's say from, guard, from, guard, from guards. It's very, very similar than when the shot is from corner. Guard behind play, point guard someone falls, other players must protect the rim. So usually for us is uh after, is this is very important. Eh? And this is my problem when I'm not on the court, maybe I'm not able to explain perfect. But when number three is going back, is during the layup, when she realized that the layup is making, no, is when the ball is going to the rim 
One, the, 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 the number two is shooting, is making the layup, zoom, the ball is in the air. Now is the moment for number three, number three to come here. Because if you go before, then maybe for, for number two, it's not possible to pass you to the corner. As Mike explained before, our special rules, etc., etc. So in our circle rules, breaking the rule, the circle uh, rules, three have to stay waiting. But when she realized that the number two is making the layup and the ball is in there, now spring back, okay? Because uh, it's very similar than start from corner. Two forwards go to rebound. Two guards go back and stop the ball, stop the, the outlet pass, etc. I think I have a good clips here to show you. Stop. You look, number 13, number 13 even now is too late. First of all, the rule is not perfect in the spacing rule, number 13, who is in the opposite corner. But now when she's in the air, number 13 has to go back in the sprint. She forgot it this time. But anyway, I think she fixed it. And she stopped the ball. And then the player go back first is Bridget. Because everybody was working and active, she checked the pass. Zoom. She still the ball. We almost score. And this is a layup too from Kia. You, uh, look, this is very interesting. Look, Kia behavior. No, Kia is still. Uh, 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 sorry, instead of still working, she's looking the ball. So this is very dangerous. For If she doesn't score, it's very, very dangerous. Because in three seconds, Fra uh, Puerto Rico now, or whoever it is, can be in advantage five on four or five on three. Okay? So 13 and the other guy have to protect Kia's behavior. We work with with this a lot of time. That after the layup, keep working. Doesn't matter what. Keep working. Don't look the ball. So even after a lot of practice, the habits they got in the past when they was kids, especially uh, kids with uh, maybe no seven or eight, or this is very difficult. But maybe when they were uh, 11, 12, you, you we can start with 10, 11, 12 years old. To work like a like a game, you no know? kid games. Okay, you have to create it. It's uh, amazing. Sometimes I, I I practice with the senior team a lot of kid games, competition games, shooting competition games, etc. And they don't realize that they are working offensive rebound, and precision defense. But we introduce in the drills of the, those details, and then they are taking the habit, the habit, the habit. Okay, to avoid these kind of situations that they are very very dangerous. But because we did a good job, we stopped the ball. Mm -hmm. You can lay up. Look. Mm -hmm. For me, Kia Bridget, not good, not perfect. But now, yes. They run back. But just this, you know. Uh, this is a, a clip to show you that if they don't run back super fast, then we are in the trouble. Anyway, they just spring back, blah, blah, blah. Now it's four on two. So it was not a very good transition defense, but at the end, we fix it a little bit. So this is an example that not good, but not bad. Okay, rule number five, start from the wing. Uh, opposite wing gets uh, to free throw, high percentage of rebound, tips, shooter and perimeter balance the floor. This is uh, when I was talking with you about the percentage, no? how many times the ball is around this space 
in 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 this space in a, in a free throw line is because okay the the, the basketball is changing and uh, maybe it was almost 10 or 10 12 years ago when I, I analyzed and I asked to my staff in Canada basketball that we have to to study again to see if because the um the basketball is changing so we have to check if uh, these rules are still working. Look like that they still work, but the athletes now are bigger, are more physical. So we have to check if uh, in during the next years if uh, this rule is still working perfectly. You know, and and the, and the, the rule is very clear. Always when we start from wing, three players go to offensive rebound. It's mandatory one of them, especially the player is in the weak side, the guard is in the weak side, sprint to get the free throw line. Mm -hmm. It was my 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 biggest analyze in the past. And I think it's still working, but we have to reflect about it. We have to think about if uh, if uh, it's more in this area or or now because the, the, the athletes are bigger and strong, maybe uh, the rebound comes less times to, to 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 this line and this space or maybe we have to go into the the zone a little bit more i don't know this is maybe the, the advanced statistics can give us more information but at the moment we are keeping them and we'll see it in the coming years It is clear. Look, Leticia Amihayer is going. Natalia Chonga is not going. So, Natalie, Natalie, who is here, and Leticia must be to the offensive rebound before Kia catch the ball. This is um, Shay Coley has to come to the free throw line, and Naira has to protect the rim a little bit. Let's see. Shay Coley is coming, but slowly. So it's good. Yes, it's not bad, but it's not perfect. You know, from my lens, it's not perfect. So even, I guess I want to share with you my thoughts, even with uh, a lot of practice, drills, etc. even during the, the real game, they forget, uh, they forgot in that moment, no? some, the rules or the intensity of the, just to do it their best. On the court, I think it's important not just in in those uh, details, in any detail. And yes, I would like to to transmit my idea. Okay, and I hope I am able to transmit you uh, some some details, some things. I think they have to practice that when they are fresh, when they are not tired. Even fast break and transition offense, uh, because I think when they 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 have it to run or to go and sprint to the free throw line now, or that when they are not tired, they execute perfect. Then they take the habit, and then they are able to do it always in any scenario when they are tired and when they are not they are not tired. So it's a lot of repetitions, a lot of reps. Maybe it's not necessary, but it's necessary to encourage them to do it as best as they can. For that reason, I'm talking with you, if they are not tired, because if they are tired, sometimes it's, oh my God, again, oh my God, oh, we are tired, I don't, don't want to run. It's, then you are making mad as a coach, and boom, oh, problem, and then, okay, let's see tomorrow. Oh, hey, I don't like. So with uh, you have uh, some rules, like, these rules, I recommend you to practice and to execute them when they are not tired. With drills, okay, in the beginning or the end, doesn't matter, but when they are not tired. Let's see the next clip. You have to understand that this is the, the, the World Cup. Eh? This is the highest level against some of the, the best teams in the world. 
So boom. Now is who. Look, this is interesting because if you check Bridget, 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 she knows that she's in at on the top and she has to go back, but Bridget is good offensive rebound. So she's hesitating to come on to down come. And 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 Kia know Kia is thinking, oh, but Bridget is beside me. I have to go. Oh, so this is the kind of situation that we have to fix. Check Natalia Chongwa and Kel Alexander. They were very well. Okay. So, but at, at least Kia is around this area. Look, the rebound comes close to the free throw line. If Kia is here and the shooter has the responsibility to go back too, maybe Kia gets the rebound or maybe Kia stops the ball. Anyway, I think we did a great job running back and stopping the, the ball. Wrong wing, look this player. Kayla Alexander knows that the floor is working perfect. Perfect. And she knows that she's uh, not, um, Ace Conning, the shooter. So she knows perfectly that Ace is going to shoot. She's coming here. I miss Yvonne just maybe goes to rebound a little bit early. And let's see. Marisa Russell behavior. If everything is normal, she should be here. Okay. So why uh, Marisa Russell didn't come here? It's very clear because she's a great rebounder too. So we recommend her. A, check the situation. If you think that you are in a good position to get the rebound, be brave. We'll figure out how to fix everything. Okay, so according with the players you have, you have to create your own rules. Mm -hmm. And everybody has to know it, the rest of the players. This is the most important. And now kick ahead. And look, Marisa. Marisa, get the ball. Kick out. And then she came again. To the rebound, shoot, Bam. and Kayla and Yvonne keep working. So this is a perfect, perfect situation for us. The perfect example of our offensive rebound rules. Offensive rebounding transition the counter. They only jump the ball, player guarding the rebounder, break, break the action, hands, feet, and intuition. Of course, then you have to work in some details like your activity, your hands, your behavior, et cetera, et cetera. Now you have options like a, a closest guard works to take away OLED, make the catch difficult, take away vision, influence ball to silent. So many situations that you have to, to fix it, okay, or you have to, to work on it to uh, keep in court because it's not just, hey, this is the rules, one, two, three, four, five rules, and then no. Uh, especially after turnover or during the turnover is happening, how to react in that moment to avoid the the the, the, the lineup to, to don't give very easy points to the rival, and we have some uh, rules, you know, especially to spring back to touch the pain in the turnover, you know, to avoid at least the lineup. The player is uh, close to the ball. But look, the player is close to the ball, not the, 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 the player made the turnover. No, the player is close to the ball. Don't go to stop the ball. She goes to touch the pain. And then at least to avoid the layup. And we'll figure out the rest of the parts in a good close out. And the player made the turnover, she has to back and then to make the decision just to, to match whoever is. Uh, alone or ready to 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 receive the ball. 
not involving garden bar, well, yeah, you can read problems, uh, problems of avoid disadvantage, spring home and see the ball, like I told you, slow down the ball, the group actions prevent uh, disadvantage. So yes, with all these points, items, you have to create drills. drills uh, I would like to be there in person to, to show you just a, a session no, about, about it, how we work and develop the process until the team is playing official official game. And sometimes it's not in five on five. No, it's not in five on five. Usually it's in, in, in two on two, in, in one on one, in three on three, in two on seven. And maybe in five on if we practice our playbook at at the end of, of, of the day, we execute or we try to recognize what is the logical side from corner. Oh, now lay up. Now extra pass to get the win. Now everybody. Does. And it's curious because when all of them know the, the rules, they fix each other. I don't have to say nothing. They fix each other. Hey, you have to come here. Or you hear, ah, but don't forget that that I'm the specialist in offensive rebound. Oh, sure, that's I have to back. Sorry, my bad. So then uh, they understand, they, they enjoy a lot doing that, and they realize that if if uh, we are playing against team that usually score 80 points or 75 points, hey, we play against them, and then just they score just 60 today. And why? Because, okay, for sure, maybe because we score a lot, but if we, even if we don't score, you have the option during three, four, five minutes to stop them. So if you don't have this kind of rules, maybe in three minutes, maybe you are five points down or three points down. And if you don't stop the ball and you don't have during these two minutes a great uh, transition defense, a great defense, in two minutes, maybe you are 15 points down and the game is down. You know, so that, this is just a situation that we prepare during the game, mm -hmm. during the practice, sorry. Look, this is turnover, no? Okay, maybe it's fall, but it's, it's turnover. So how oh, we have to react in this moment? Waiting for what? Waiting for Naira, get up and then go? No, everybody ready to keep working. And Naira will come, you know, and stop the ball. Okay. And then is when we, uh, I have to say that I hate this kind of fouls. Okay. I have to say that I don't like to use them because I, I think this kind of force don't help the basketball. Don't help to show to the to the to the fans great basketball. So we work with rules because we don't want to use this kind of fouls. But I accept that sometimes you have to use it. Mm -hmm. But but it's important for me to transmit you that. If we have the rules, we want to work in our transition defense uh, to use this kind of uh, fouls in a right way without an sportman light. Okay. I don't work on it. I prefer to uh, spend my time working really hard in a something like a is going to help the basketball. You know, what I want is to score every day, 90 points, 80 points. When I talk with my players is, no, guys, we are not a defensive team. We What we want is to get the ball to attack, get the ball to attack. So I'm not proud of these kind of fouls. I know that sometimes you have a smart players, but if you check the situation, do you think that Natalie needs to make a foul now? It's not necessary. Just hands up. And everybody go back. Okay. And we maybe fix the situation without foul. Okay. So make a foul, no problem at all. Okay. Especially if it's Natalia Chong was the captain. Okay. Enjoy. Okay, this is maybe it's not it's uh 
what we are looking here, we are watching this is not logical sad, okay? It's sad that uh, the French player is contesting perfectly, but anyway, look Leticia behavior, look Kia Nur's behavior, they know that they are in a good position to stop the ball. So everybody ran back. And now Bridget is protecting the rim. Now she realized that her teammate is running back. So boom, she comes. And now she has stopped the ball. Uh, the usual behavior is to go back. But is look where she is looking. She is looking her teammates behavior and when she knows that everybody's in a good position and even with advantage then boom she comes here okay and look kia kia her, she has to defense her or, 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 or the other you know the player is under the rim so because kia know that they are not dangerous. And Naira know that they are not dangerous. Both of them come here to protect Bridget. If Gabby Williams, one of the best players in the world, wants to break Bridget, Bridget and to come here. This is very important. And this kind of detail, maybe the, the fans, they are not able to, to watch it. But as a coaches, we have to appreciate these details. Those details, you know, boom, Kia is here, Naira is here, everybody's working, the forwards are matching, and then look here, Kia forced Gabby Williams to don't go here. No Bridget, Bridget in in first option, but then Kia forced her to say, okay, stop, let's set whatever they want to play. Look, in the beginning of the side, when, when Kayla is shooting, we don't have advantage, right? Oh, we are eh, three, three. But then, because we work perfectly, we stop them and we force them to play with a few seconds in not logical shot, blah, blah, blah. I'm very proud of this kind of situation. It's when I realize that the team get our intensity and our rules in defense. Let's analyze this. Okay, on the top. Look here. I miss in this, I miss Bridget here. And Kayla Alexander coming here. But this is the perfect example to adjust our rules to the rival. You know why? Because it's Japan. Japan, I think, is the best team in the world playing transition offense and shooting trees in five seconds. So we have a rule to A. Just one player to the rebound and depends on how the score is. Maybe we can go or whatever, but avoid trees. Because Japan is this kind of team that maybe are 20 points down. But in five minutes, they come back to the game. So, and this is the experience we got playing against them, no? in the first um, FIBA window. We were winning by almost 20 and in five, six minutes because our turnover, because our, to don't have good transition defense, they come back to the game and they beat us in the, in the overtime. So now we match them. Even we are in mismatch, but it's not a problem at all. We avoid the post positions. And okay, it's not a very good defense of pick and roll, but this is not the topic today. Eh? <laughs> In my opinion, we have to switch here. But I think Leticia Mihaier don't realize that it's a ghost script. She doesn't touch. Yeah? Did you check? Check. She doesn't touch. And then Bridget is waiting, but maybe she had to switch. Then and, and, and Leticia and Bridget can switch perfectly. But okay, this is for a different topic. Mm -hmm. 
Additional details, fake, stand at the ball, bumps, runners, make them change their path. No personal, for sure, if you were playing against uh, Japan or France or Capital Court or Manitou, but, but I don't know. Uh, location shooters, crowd drivers, always just some details that you have to be ready uh, at the end of uh, your preparation for your, for your games. So with kids... This is a lot for kids. It's a lot for kids with 12 years old or 15 years old. But maybe today they don't know to do nothing or just two or three of them are able to do something. But tomorrow maybe they are better. After one week or, or 15 days, they are much better. You know, and then uh, kids with 12 years old are great in offensive rebound. And but you don't you cannot explain them to kids with 12, 13 years old, the rule like a, I explain to the senior. You have to explain them with in a different way, kid way, you know, with I don't know, some kid games or some details, and 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 with patience to say, if you come here, if you don't wait, uh, if your teammate is catching the ball, you have to go and maybe you have to back. Boom, boom, boom. And this is a, 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 a treasure for them. You know, I don't know if treasure is the word to use. Sometimes as you realize uh, I don't find the right uh, words, but it's like a, we are investing time in the in basketball that are, are great because to develop the skills is very important, but to uh, to be great going to fancy rebound, what is a skill? Of course, you know, it's a the player learn this from their kids. They don't, they won't forget in the future, you know, and then deal this style of play, those details, like uh, I was uh, uh, listening to, to, to my, my colleagues here is, oh, we are developing our Canadian style of play. And then one day, all Canadian teams, especially national team, no, when they, we are playing against uh, international um, tournaments, everybody recognizes Canada on the court. And I love that. I don't know if uh, we'll have, we, we, I, th I hope we will have time to get it soon, but we are working really hard to say what is the best uh, style of play basketball. And this is uh, one of the most important things uh, for me. Mm -hmm. So that's all. Thank you very much. And the other ones that have been sent to me directly, I'll ask the first one that was sent to me directly because you just sort of touched on it was, uh, in your opinion, what are the, some of the biggest differences between the European and the North American styles of play? Oh, I think in, in, the, in the senior level, you mean? Okay. Yeah. Or junior, uh, younger as well, either or. Uh, younger as well. Okay, system. we are talking about Canada or USA? We'll say Canada. <laughs> okay, say Canada. Okay, for Canada, me, North America. Okay, okay, yeah, I understood, okay. Because it's different, Canada is not USA. We are. We have different, we have in Canada great influence from USA. Okay, but let's say, let's say again, uh, Canada and, and Europe. And in Europe, there is a, there are, difference eh, between Spain and France or France and, and Lithuania, no? Uh, depends of the country, you have uh, some influence, you know, let's say Lithuania, all of them want to see, to, to be uh, great shooters, like Jacek Vicious, you know? So if uh, I would like to compare uh, Canada and, and, and Spain, uh, just to, to talk about the, the countries I know perfectly. I think in, in in Spain, we are always thinking how to develop the competitiveness of the kids. For me, this is a great difference. I think in Canada, there are great coaches in the skills development, like in, in, in Spain, you know? And we, the great difference for me is the competitiveness. In Spain, from their kids, we are trying to teach them how to compete in uh, in uh, any age, especially from 12, 11, 12 years old. Okay, but uh, using always the right spacing, 
uh, sharing the, pa- the the ball, you know. The, I think the the in my opinion, the the Spanish coaches uh, are all the time looking for looking to play as best as possible, encourage the kids to compete, you know. And here in Canada, uh, looking the practices, I think we have lack of tournament to compete. So coaches are developing the kids in a right way, but then because we don't have in Canada the tournaments Spain has there, it's more difficult for us to check if the kids are playing well, you know, or they compete, they, 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 they compete uh, all the time, not just to win, to play better, to see if they, so we can practice here a lot, but if they don't play tournaments, the example is very simple. I checked it, uh, I can show you the, sh- the example with our na- national team players. Uh, under 16 years old Canadian player from 12 years old to 16 years old, they play maybe six, seven exhibition games. Okay, international exhibition games. Okay, but in Spain, maybe the kid play 30 or 40. You know, so maybe the Canadian player is better. But at the end, when they have to compete, Spanish better uh, Spanish players are better in that moment to win the game, to face quarterfinal, to face semifinal, and this is what I realized just watching you know, the, the 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 style of develop the kids, you know, and um, there is not more different, no, because I think I think uh, now today nowadays with um, with uh, with internet with uh, the connection we have with another con- uh, countries. You can check all the style of pra- of practice, all the styles of play. Uh, you you can do your own pathway, you know. But this is for me the the great difference. Once we keep this in balance, will be an unstoppable country. And this in women, okay. I like I like to 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 to, to talk about women, but an unstoppable eh? uh, country because they are little we have here. Yes, you can get them in USA. Maybe in France, but in the rest of the world, you don't have the athletes I saw here in the Junior Academy or in in other uh, provinces, etc. And one one more thing, Adam. One more thing. One more thing. Uh, Because of this competitiveness, in my opinion, the Spanish player now, now, eh. We'll see the future. We are trying to change all of this. They read and react better any situation. Maybe no beginning of the, of the game, but during the game, they read better the situations, how to face the, that situation, those situations. Mm-hmm. Uh, another question that's here. Um, uh, I'm coaching a team with some players uh, playing basketball for the very first time. How should I teach them to box out properly? The, the first time? First time uh, first time players, very, yeah. so new players. I think the most difficult thing uh, is is different topic, okay? It's different topic, but I, I will do my best now to think about it. The the most difficult situation for, for them is not to box out the player they have close to them. Let's say if you are, uh, you, I'm in the ball side. Okay, I'm in the ball side. I'm a forward, and my my uh, I'm defending, and the ball is in 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 the same side in the ball side, and there. So for me, it's not difficult to box out. This is a skill is very easy to 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 develop. You know, the most difficult for me is to develop the weak side. The weak side. Uh one of the 
the rules I work I, I, I like to work with young players and senior players is if you are in offense in the wings in the in the weak side, if your defender is not looking you, you have to do something or to go to fences rebound or to always without to punish the ball. Okay? So for me, if you are in the weak side, you have to prepare yourself to, to box out like you are defending, you know? You are defending the ball, you are defending the, the your player, and you are the triangle, no? Yeah, so if the player you are guarding comes, okay, box out. But if she didn't, if she doesn't come, don't do nothing. Just keep your position in the right way. So we defense, we, we work in box out like you are working in a pass, in a line of the pass. You know what I mean? It's clear or no? Adam? No, that makes sense. You are it's, it's yep. exactly in the same position that when you are defending the line of the pass. And then yeah, you have to be ready. Is she coming? Okay. Box out. But don't go. Wait for her. Just in a good position. And once she's close to you, this is the you have to develop this, this skill. No? But if she doesn't come, she is not dangerous. You are in a perfect position. Because if you go to boxing out, maybe it's easier for her to break you. You know what I mean? So yes, prepare yourself like a, in line of the pass, and then make the decision, the best decision you think is the right decision. There's a follow-up question that's very similar to this. I'm just gonna ask it right now, it just came in. Uh, what is your concept of boxing out a physical or very dominant rebounder? Do you treat them any differently? That they're, that they're, they're a, a physical presence on the floor? Uh, do you treat them any differently or, or do you, doesn't matter what who they are. No, I think doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah, uh, okay. doesn't matter. Physically, uh, doesn't matter. Yes, you have you have to adjust your your players, no, perfect according with the situation, the rivals, etc. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, slightly different topic, a bit more big picture questions here. The last two we've got right now, uh, coaches. This will be the last call for any other questions if you've got them coming in. Uh, please share them now. But we have two last ones that are sort of more big picture. Um, what is the biggest challenge in becoming one of the best defensive teams in the world? The biggest challenge for me was yeah. stop USA. <laughs> stop USA. Okay. I, like, oh, the most difficult thing is to stop the talent. You know, you can stop average player. You can even adjust yourself uh, to the rival. You can adjust and perfection your rules according with that. When you have oh, these talents in front of you, you don't have find a way to stop them. You know, when those guys come together, it's the dream team. No, you remember 1992? Eh? Which in women, it's always the dream team. 1992 dream team. Is Jordan, Pippen, uh, Haki, uh, oh, Hagin, uh, Carmelo, they're always in front of you. Aya Wilson, Stewart, Taurasi, Griner, and when they are almost to retire, more players are coming up, but it's a dream team again. So, uh, even I always when I played against USA, I, I remember when we played um, in Rio de Janeiro, the final against them, and in, in Turkey, the World Cup, we played the final against them in the first period. <laughs> 520, 525, 7. So um, it's when we, we when we prepare the games, we say, hey, we have to score a lot from three. And we have we need a perfect transition defense, stop them, use the fall, you know, et cetera, et cetera. No way. No way, because how you stop the talent? And you know, if you have maybe one player or two great players, but always they have five. Five great players. This is my dream with Canada. What we have to do in the future, uh, I don't know if I will stay here. It is, you never know, no life. Today, this is now for me, it's a dream to, to, to live in Canada, to learn about uh, North America, 
basketball, business. It is oh, amazing for, for me and for my family. Yes, I would like to say thank you to the country because from the first day, we feel like a, one more Canadian family here, you know? And this is, I was living in Russia, I was living in, in Turkey, I was living in, in some countries that I didn't feel that. So from me here to you, thank you very much because Canada as a country is amazing. So my dream is what we have to do to one day be close to USA and, and that, or, or, or the same level, you know, to have five players like they have. Now we have four or five players in WNBA. I have the dream in, in, in 10 years to have 20, like the main team right now, eh? 20, 25, 30 Canadian players there. And then one day we'll get the gold. Mm-hmm. Love it. Love it. Love your passion. Uh, and uh, it's amazing that you you felt that way in Canada, that you're, uh, you were uh, <laughs> become part of uh, the culture here. And we're super, super, super excited to have you part of the Canadian uh, framework. Okay, Adam, awesome. thank you. Next time in person, eh? Next time we Next do- time in person, for sure. We'd yeah. love to have you here in person and uh, work with our athletes and uh, talk more directly with our coaches. Um, so that officially will end it with our uh, our special guest that will wrap up our, our afternoon here with uh, Coach Victor. Uh, again, we can't thank you enough for uh, chiseling out some time in, in your day uh, to be with us uh, for the uh, for the duration of our, our Super Coaches Clinic here. Um, so we are going to uh, just wrap things up with a last little uh, one last slide here. So again, thanks, Coach. Uh, we'll keep you in touch. Uh, love to have you here in Manitoba one day. Thanks again for joining us. Enjoy Bye-bye. your weekend.